go. And what's up, PBO people? It is Aiden, aka the St. Louis Solgalios, and Kuma, aka the Tokyo Teddy Ursas. Say what's up. Hello, hello. Here with the very first week pickums for the Neon Division, revamped, ready to come back and do all eight weeks this season. No burnout, nothing like that. We got a full team, and we're excited to be here, showing you guys what we think of the matchups and um. Seeing uh, how many people we can make mad with our analysis. I'm just kidding. Anyway, on to the first matchup on the slides. It is the Uncertain Unknowns versus the King Keldios. Um, Kuma, why don't you go ahead and start us off with uh, what you think about these these two? Yeah, um, I think B definitely has the advantage here with... You know, Dragapult plus Veil, and he has, you know, Defiant Ogre Pond, Arcanine Hisui being just a really strong breaker overall, and unironically, Malamar looks really good into this matchup with Terra Fight, uh, Superpower, and uh, dark, dark Stab and such, Psychic Stab as well. I think yeah. Rex has to play, or Uncertain Unknowns has to play really, really well to for this match to like go in his favor. Yeah. Um. So yeah, looking at it, like Dragapult screens, Arcanine Sui, it all looks super good. Um. Especially with Incineroar on the other side, uh, always wanting to bring Intimidate. Uh. It can't really because contrary Defiant. Um. Uh. And also. Uh. Just the the breaking power of like Scythe Spam between Sneasler having Unburdened Sword Stance, um, and then like Iron Crown being able to come in, um, and like break a little, uh, looks looks really really strong here, uh, between like Tachyon Cutter, um, maybe even popping an Agility on like a predicted switch or something, um, being faster than everything, uh, Tachyon Cutter with like Psychic or even Psy Shock, um, being being really really strong uh, and being able to break. Having that defensive backbone of like pivoting with Aloe uh, seems really, really strong here. Um, only thing to watch out for is Ogre Pond, obviously. Uh, and then Clefable, unaware, means like no no setup really, um, which could be one of the only answers to uh, Malamar, uh, which which uh, definitely goes really, really crazy here, especially if it is in Tim and Center War. Um, overall, we, we did give it to. Uh, be the King Keldeos here, um, purely because of the fact that the game looks so much easier for them to play. Uh, the Uncertain Unknowns looks like they have to get a lot of turns right, a lot of predictions, um, and just overall have really, really good like prep and play in order to um, kind of outlast the the damage that um, the King Keldeos can can do with their roster and their uh, their setup. Um, and so with that, we give it to them. Next one we got is the Detroit Zoroarks versus the Artillery Octillaries. Um, and first things first, I, I don't know how the Octillaries can really handle the firepower of, of Valiant, Tusk, Dio Speed, and like Dragonite and, and Metagross. It looks super, super overwhelming just hyper offense into into everything the only real um like stoppers are kind of our chaladon uh wheezing and fortress but even then uh after like a bulk up or two tusk can can pretty handedly uh take care of those uh, it kind of depends on wheezing terra uh for for tusk um like if it's terra water i think tusk could have a potentially difficult time especially if it gets burned but uh Tusk and, and Valiant do kind of just go really, really crazy here. Um, even if it's like special Valiant uh, to get past uh, like a like a Fizz Def or Chaladon or something. Um, the only thing I will say that uh, uh, Detroit has to watch out for is like a like a rain uh, sweep with like uh, Electro Shot or something. Uh, but even then, Great Tusk kind of kind of sits on that uh, unless it's Zapdos, in which case Hurricanes do look pretty free if it's like Scarf and Rain. Uh, Metagross is really the only answer to that, um, but even that doesn't want to switch into like a Thunder or a, or a Weather Ball or anything. Uh, so, what do you, what do you think, uh, Kuma? I actually see 
a very scary looking Pokemon for Detroit here is Basculegion under rain actually looks really scary with adaptability. Oh, true. I didn't even see that yet. I think that Mon unironically could do a lot of work. Um, sure. I do think like Iron Valiant, Great Tusk, and Deoxys Feed is really illegal, and I, it's, it's really hard for me to think that the artillerys, the artillerys are gonna have a very like easy time dealing with all three of those Mons at the same time. Weezing has Terra Electric, which could be. A little useful given that you know levitate plus electric no weaknesses but uh it's probably not worth getting rid of the fairy resist that wheezing has i do think wheezing will be crucial in this matchup for tusk and valiant as well as maybe maybe worrying about dragonite a little bit ursaluna also looks like it could do some really nasty like trading given that it, it has such uh, free will in its move slots. Zapdos does look pretty good here with Weather Ball. Yeah, I think it, it could maybe even be argued that this is an even-ish matchup, match up, but I still think I'd put it in Detroit's favor. Only a little bit, though. Yeah, like like with the last matchup, I think it's a lot easier for Detroit to play. I feel like the artillerys have to get um, a decent amount of turns right, have to get probably some predictions, um probably come up with some creative things i mean who knows maybe like a bulk up zarud i don't know um but I, I it's definitely easier for for detroit to play the game in the way that it was intended um and so that's why we gave it the slight edge to uh detroit next up we have the blasphemous blacephalons and the sydney sylveons both players brand new to the pbo um both players um from talks that uh we've had with both of them seem newer to the competitive pokemon setting or at least singles draft setting um gonna be a very very interesting one to see uh kuma start us off with uh your thoughts on this one i think it's really hard for the sylveons to lose here I am not the biggest fan of the Blacephalon's draft, but I do think they still have, you know, some pretty cheap mons and like Ursaluna and Blood Moon and Lando T. So and like they have Quagsire, so they can like stifle out like Roaring Moon or Iron Boulder for a little bit. But I do think Sydney Sylveon's Primarina will be very useful here. Primarina looks really strong, like offensively to be honest into Blacephalons. Claude's air will stop any sort of setup from like Garganackle or Jirachi if it even gets anything relevant setup wise. Terra Kilowatt roll also looks really dangerous here, outspeeding literally everything. Yeah, I just I just think it's it's really hard for Sydney to lose here, honestly. What what do you think about it? Yeah, no, for sure. It's definitely hard for Sydney to lose as long as they play it right. Between the defensive backbone of Prim, Clodzire, Mandibuzz, and Knackle Stack, um, seeing as those as those four uh, can go really, really crazy, Mandibuzz wall uh, can like try to wall Landorus T. Might have to. Um, I don't. I don't know. I haven't seen the calcs or anything on that. Um, cause Stone Edge could be really, really crazy. Um, but like even um, like Knackle Stack or something. Terra Water Knackle stack could could be uh, pretty crazy in handling that, uh, as well as really into Quagsire and Kingdra. The fact that Quagsire wants to sit there in front of um, like Moon and be unaware, do unaware things, talk. Uh, I don't know if I get. I've been playing too much Nat Dex. Forget if uh, it gets toxic in this gen. Um, but uh, one mod I do see that I'm really big fan of. I don't think it's going to come to the game, but Bramblegast um, looks pretty good in this team. Uh, could probably even wall Lando with some like sub seed nonsense, strength sap, max fizz def. I really like it. Um, yeah, overall, really hard for Sydney to lose this game. Uh, could be some sort of trick room angle with Exeggutor, Terra into Blood Moon. Um, 
in in bear tick or something along those lines um which could maybe give sydney some trouble if they are not prepared um but it's definitely easier for sydney to, to win this game for sure which is why we uh did end up giving it to them um and next is my game uh which i will have kuma go over uh as we don't want to have any bias or any sort of um sort of favoritism or strategy um reveal in in these videos so i'm gonna have a hand it over to him and let him take care of this in this matchup day day has pretty much free will to do whatever he likes uh aiden over here has no switches in the mascarada except for a defensive belly bolt which just allows it to run amok as well as not being able to remove hazards at all versus Tinglu. Raging Bolt also does insane work into him. Hatterene blocking Glamora. Specs, Terrafly, Articuno just 2 KOing the entire team no matter what. It's, it's, it's a very hard matchup for Aiden. He does have the cheesiest mon in existence in King Gambit. Dawnfan is a reliable spinner. Even though it can't really spin in the face of Golden Go, it can still threaten it very easily. Greninja can obviously take take a game by itself, however, Miascarada beating it by one speed point is very tilting. Latios can, you know, do its do Latios things, do breaking things. Skeledurge is a good wall. But it it's it's really hard for Aiden to win here unless Day really fumbles his his prep. All right, with that, we move on to the next one. The Asheville Azumarils versus the Toronto Star Raptors. And uh, in this matchup, Banded or even just regular Weavile knockoffs look so insanely free into every Mon that exists on his team. Um, the only thing uh, that we uh, will have to watch out for is, is bundle as it is the only thing that outspeeds maybe even like a, a scarf Cinderace, but that feels a little overkill, uh, for Cinderace, unless it wants to try to beat like plus one, uh, Blaziken or something along those lines. Um, but overall, uh, Weavile just looks so strong in this matchup. Ice Dark coverage beats almost his entire team. Um, knockoff is super, super good as well. Getting rid of potential bundle specs um, or boots, uh, which it always wants to run into a glide score that can set up rocks and spikes. Um, and uh, Cinderace being able to court change does kind of prohibit that. But even then, um, it... Uh, Asheville does have um, Chinchino, uh, which can tidy up. Otherwise, I think that's the only removal I can see off yeah, the top of my head. That's the only removal that they have. Um, so, Court Change Cinderace does look uh, pretty decent, but Gliscor can just set hazards up again in the front, in the face of anything except for like Bundle and Hydreigon. Um, but even then, Spadef Gliscor looks really good here to help with those things. Um, and so, hazards will most likely be up on both sides of the field. And uh, get those very, very important knocks off. Yeah, I I am a little worried actually now. If uh, Asheville sets up webs, if they get core changed back, I'm not sure how easily they can actually remove them, along with other hazards. Like if they decide to hazard stack with Gliscor or something. I. Weavile is a very big threat into Toronto and is very, very free to click knockoff and stabs into him. Even if he brings like Rocky Helmet Skarmory to beat like Triple Axel, it really won't do much because you should just be spamming knockoff every turn that Weavile is in. I think Scarf Hydreigon or any other countermeasure is pretty hard to bring given Asheville's like defensive mons. I think Blaziken also does really, really well into to Toronto, which it, it really doesn't bode well. I think Toronto has to hope that Asheville messes up in prep somehow. Yeah, for sure. It's 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 a lot easier for Asheville to win here than it is for Toronto. Um, however, I, I do see 
a a win con for Toronto. Um, in the fact that like if a setup mon does get going, um, and is able to outspeed a Blaziken or take at least a hit and kill it right back, um, it can definitely be very very uh, dangerous for Asheville. Um, but overall, Asheville does have the very very heavy favor um, because of uh, Weavile, and so that is why we've given it to them. And on to the New York Knickets versus the Ottawa Don fans. Um, this is one of the game of the weeks, uh, as Ottawa has been a veteran here for many, I think roughly three or four seasons, maybe even since the inception of the PBO. Um, and Kayla being the new blood coming in as one of our Stargazer, um, players, one of the more highly renowned players, uh, Orange, aka the Frederick Klefkeys. Uh, have praised him uh, and said that he is he's very good um, we are we are interested to see what uh, what happens uh, Kuma start this one off for us yeah Caleb's Caleb's matchup here is pretty pretty good considering he has uh, back slow king slow king completely stopping any sand shenanigans that Ottawa might want to do Screen's Grimmsnarl might prove a little bit annoying to Caleb, however. Spectrier does do very well into Caleb, however, he does have specific countermeasures like especially defensive Komala or even just AV Komala that can just knock off and I think Komala might get U-turn actually. I think it does. I think it does. Um Yeah, I think just the combination of backs and slow king and Komala making it easier to navigate the matchup as well as, you know, obvious threats like Annihilate and Enamorous, Terra Jolteon, they can do, put in a lot of work. Keytran can also help uh, versus certain mons like Alcrevy and Grimstarl and Corviknight. Yeah, I, I think it, it's, it's very hard for Ottawa to operate how he wants to play the matchup. He has to rely pretty heavily on Caleb just messing something up and perhaps just getting a sleep with Spectriere after getting a nasty plot off. I could see Tyranitar being some really like weird specific set to beat some random Bax variant. I think Excadrill is a little bit hard to bring. Not too hard. It can spam Iron Head pretty freely aside from Heatran. Grimstarl with screens could prove to be a little annoying, however, because Caleb doesn't have defog to get rid of the screens. So you'd have to resort to using Brick Break and versus a team that can easily punish a fighting move with Spectrier is not something you want to do. Yeah, I, I, but I would still put it in Caleb's favor. I think Ottawa definitely has options, though. Yeah, for sure. Ottawa definitely has options. Spectre with a nasty plot up um, does go a little crazy. Um, AV Komala does kind of does kind of uh, shut it down. Well, not shut it down, um, but it does help a lot um, and knock off into a Spectre if it's not through even max attack Komala. Um, I don't know how much damage that is doing, but I know that's doing a lot of damage. A Spectre doesn't really want to take, especially if it can't necessarily heal it off all the way. Um, another thing I could see um, happening is maybe even a Scarf Annihilate in this match. Um, looks pretty good. It doesn't really need to be Scarf for much else except for Spectre. Um, and a base 50 Rage Fist isn't doing all that much however if it can come in on an easily telegraphed corvinite u-turn in front of like a back caliber or something um i think that could be a really really easy way for annihilate to potentially even catch a um catch spectre on a switch in uh or something along those lines uh, i do think that having slow king against sand as well helps out a ton um and once corvinite's gone back caliber goes insane into this team between glaive rush earthquake like either ice shard or icicle crash um it goes kind of crazy the only thing that kind of stops that is uh vaporeon but i don't know if um vaporeon is necessarily the best i could see it coming because of backs and annihilate um but then we're bombi 
even Toad Scroll and Jolteon um, kind of just destroy it. Uh, so while there while there are ways for Ottawa to definitely definitely play, like Kuma said, it's it's definitely hard for him to operate and do what he wants to do in this matchup. And I feel like Caleb, as long as he maintains that control, um, can very very easily uh, maintain control of this match and uh, beat uh, Ottawa. Uh, somewhat handedly depending on game state and whatnot uh, which is why we gave it to the New York Nickets and our final match of the week is the Kaborka Gengars versus the Boston Baybets rebranded from last season um, somewhat funny team uh, rebrand anyway uh, but looking to the actual Mons now um, the grassy terrain Gouging Fire Treads is one heck of a combo. Um, absolutely insane. Giving uh, reliable recovery to Gouging Fire and Treads without having to run leftovers um, is is very, very good here. Uh, even if Gouging decides to be a, a D-Dance set and set up, uh, I think it could be really good. Uh, it needs Don Dozo to be either whittled or gone um, before it does that. Uh, and I think that, that it can that can easily happen between Rillaboom and Sinistra. Um, a choice band of Rillaboom I know does probably a ton to a Dondozo. Um, and even Ooh, then Sinistra can know. Calm Mind or uh, or Giga Drain, Machigacha, anything. And that is doing a ton to Dondozo. Um, one thing I will say for for the for Boston side is that Wochian, um Kind of sets on a lot of things here, uh, especially if it's like Terra Poison or something. It can it can do a lot. Um, two first impression mons as well that can just be banded, come in, click moves. While there are a lot of resists, those are still taking a lot of damage um, if they aren't uh, physically defensive. Because one, I think both uh, Slitherwing and Haxorus are like base 140 attack. Or at least you know Haxorus is like 145. Slitherwing um, is 137, Haxorus is one. What did I say? Slitherwing is 135, Haxorus is 147. Okay, so still two really, really strong physical attackers that can just run band first impression and do a lot of damage into into things. Um, which is definitely going to be something that uh, Kaborka has to watch out for. Uh, and Wochin as well. Uh, just being able to sit on things. I think it. It's definitely very, very even as both sides have their have their ways of winning and have their ways of preventing the other side from doing what they want to do. Um, yeah, what do you what do you think about this? I think I definitely think Kaborka has a lot of tools, but I also think uh, Raven has a lot of tools on their side. Wochian walling about like half of Kaborka's team with just Terra Poison and just having to sit there, Leech Seed, do its thing. Slow King Galar, I think, is going to be, you know, really pivotal to this matchup. Uh, it, as it's really Raven's only answer to Halucha, aside from Dondozo. Actually, yeah, he has Physical Rotom Wash as well. Um, but yeah, I think Slitherwing... I, I don't know if I really... yeah... I think Slitherwing could definitely do something here. Just, I don't know if it'd be banded. I kind of like bulk up, actually, here. Like Don Dozo really definitely has to come. I think Darkrai... Darkrai is a really weird mod in this battle, but it does outspeed quite literally everything on Borka's team, and can probably do a KO, like, most of his team. So it's probably really, really important if you bring it like specs and just lead it, you can do some breaking. Given that uh, Kaborka's uh, dark resists aren't that great, aside from forges, which just gets nailed by Sludge Bomb anyway. For yeah, sure. I definitely think it's a it's this is our most equal matchup for the week. They both have their options to win, and their ways to prevent the opponent from winning. Yeah, it's it's gonna be a good one. Got a giant slate of games between all three divisions um we will we'll see some pickums coming out um after this one uh between sunset and stargazer um but yeah great games can't wait to see the pbo start off in a strong way starting with neon 
and everyone take care